this episode today, uh, I'm excited that the conversation is talking about social media and the promotion of higher education, marketing of higher education. My guest, we kind of nurtured a connection through social media. Honestly, as many people that I've had on the show over the years, you know, it's, it's connections that have made on, you know, Twitter, or LinkedIn or wherever else. So it kind of has that kind of neat layer kind of wrinkle to it. But, um, you know, it's something where, you know, we've had such a disruptive time as with many other things in higher education uh, these days. But, uh you know, at this moment, how can uh, higher education best leverage the various platforms and, you know, how does TikTok kind of, you know, play into the mix and all these sort of things. So we'll cover as much as we can uh, in the time that we have. But uh, Jay, if you want to uh, kick us off, just introduce yourself briefly and uh, your professional background. Yeah, folks. So my name is Jay Rithel, uh founder of a digital agency called Yamaro 83, with a focus on higher education and paid social advertising. So I've helped charter schools, vocational schools, college universities fill the pipelines through paid social advertising. And I have a goal, actually a mission, of helping a uh, thousand college departments fill their enrollment pipelines through paid social advertising. So that's that's a goal by 2025. That's me. And a bit of background, um, I've been doing this since 2016. So back before TikTok is a little, a little different. A little different then. A lot of started on organic side and I started like a local school, kind of moved around a little bit. Um, it's also changed a lot since then. So kind of stuck with the times, eventually moved over to paid advertising because lots of different reasons, depends on school you want to talk to. But uh, we've been doing that since 2016, multiple schools. Um, yeah, that's a quick version of what I've been doing. I can go longer, but you know. Yeah. Well, that, what I've been trying to tell people, because I think like just folks to sort of get a little behind the scenes where like, uh, you know, sometimes like bios, you know, people will just sort of give like the elevator pitch or I'll say for social media, you know, the Twitter bio. Uh, like I've been telling people like, no, do the Twitter bio version because it could be like, oh, it's been five minutes and we're still on your intro. And that was just like somebody gave me that feedback and it was like, oh, yeah, I've not really been like you know, uh, containing people to keep it brief. But I mean, yeah, like you said, like over the past several years, like you've just been, you know, in the mix uh, doing this for a variety of, uh, you know, institutions and things. And just, I think for people to really think about even in that time, as fast as uh, social media has changed, I mean, obviously there's always like algorithmic changes or just sort yep. of what uh, platforms in vogue and those sort of things. So like, just talk a little bit more about your background of maybe like, um, you know, how you've seen maybe different platforms come in or out, or um, honestly, even like how you got into doing this work, like what maybe kind of was compelling to you about social media marketing and higher education, like marketing higher education in particular. Same reason anyone else does it. I needed a job <laughs> back in 2016. And a school was hiring for social media. That's how, that's how, I, got, that's how I got into it. Um, but, you know, that's when Snapchat came out. So if you remember, the big thing about Snapchat 25, 2015, 16, like that was it. We got to get on Snapchat. Get us, we got to get on Snapchat. So, and it was heavily on our organic side. And I had, uh, I worked at a school that was very, a lot of politics. It was a charter school. So once we wanted to get on Snapchat, we couldn't. And the things you could say on Facebook were extremely straight. So it was just organic. They were very policing everything you could say. So it was a little hard. So that actually became more of a community engagement position, more than social media. So I would go out to the community and do interviews and stuff like that for social media, but not so much typing away at the computer trying to get people to do things I want them to do. I saw how schools worked from inside for the first time compared to like going to school. It's a completely different situation. And then I went to a charter school, and this is kind of interesting. They were they had a, a couple of different programs. They launched an IT program, and they previously spent a bunch of money on radio and TV ads. And if you remember thinking about, if you're, let's say, like, you know, early 2000s, 90s, you'd be at home watching TV and this commercial would come up and say, hey, what are you doing? Get off the couch. Go get a job. Do something like, it was like these type of commercials. They were really bad and really old. Like, they had to be at least 15 years old. And they were trying to launch an IT program based off these old commercials and things like that. And it was just bombing. It was bombing. They had grants from the, they had grants from the state, so they were pressure, pressure. I came in. So I was telling, I was like, so Facebook ads? They're like, huh? Long story short, we launched Facebook ads with a new strategy, and we filled the pipeline for like three weeks. And it was it was kind of a big deal. They filled the pipeline. They lost a lot of grant money. And so it was one of those schools where it was a nonprofit, but it relied on grants and things from the state. So no no, no students, no money, and trickle-down effect. So that's how I got in really paid advertising. And from there, the rest is just history, pretty much. Yeah. Well, and I think that's funny because like, 
certainly like a lot of people who work in higher ed, uh, like myself, you know, like we kind of like felt called to it through like some certain thing, but there is just practically like a lot of people who like, uh, you know, come into jobs or just like, I don't know, like I needed a job and I just ended up really liking it. So it's like a refreshing thing where it's not, everybody has this sort of like inspirational origin story or whatever. It's just like, there can be that other roundabout way where you get to the same place of like, Oh, this is work that I find really fulfilling, really challenging, really fun. And you know, all that. And that sort of intersection of like, what do I enjoy doing? What I'm good at. Uh, so like, yeah, it's just always kind of funny to like, you yeah. know, shake it up a little bit where it's just like, yeah, people it's, need it's jobs. True. People need to make money. Right, Let's right. like not get all so and, like poetic about it. Like, <laughs> and, you're right, and, and I remember sitting there doing an interview. This is the first job. I'm sitting in a principal in the office. Like you, you think of the office when you're a little kid. You have the chairs and everything looks old. I was like, oh my God, I'm back here again. This is crazy. And I was like, if I get this job, I'm going to post on social media. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. And I found out... And I've done other type of agencies. I've done it industries as well, but econ, all this other stuff. But to me, higher education, it's, I think I'm using my powers for good. So I can go work for Target to sell, you know, shampoo all day long. But is that really fulfilling? Where like, I've seen my work help people change their lives. Like the vocational school I worked at, I see people answer my ads and I see who they are. They come in physically and they sign up a paper. I know who they are. I see them go through a program. Three weeks later, they had a job change the whole life based off you know the one ad they saw obviously there's more to it but like that was the initiative to get a man like that's powerful and to me that's when i was like it's education for me it, it always has ever since then like that was it for me so using power to good helping people get better is better than me selling socks <laughs> t-shirts whatever Whatever you can sell. You I know? almost, I know I said nearly the same exact thing on a recent episode. So I don't know if like that was in your brain because they either listened to it or just like sort of us vibing on the same frequency. Because it's like, uh, yeah, that idea of like, you know, people can do a lot of things. And it's just like, I can't see myself working anywhere else other than you know, higher education or education in some way. So I, I appreciate that mm-hmm. you uh, sort of feel similarly. But I think it's interesting. And this is probably my one last point on sort of just sort of your background, you know, and how. So, you know, sort of things have changed over the years is like, you know, understanding very much that idea of like how you kind of like dated yourself in the sense of like Snapchat was the thing like of the moment, you know, hot in the scene, whatever. And everybody being like, you know, trying to dogpile onto, you know, that one platform and stuff. It's just like how you've seen that sort of always like ebb and flow. Cause like, obviously like Facebook has been around for a while, Twitter, LinkedIn, like those have been some of the like, you know, steady platforms and everything. So like your perspective on, trying to follow the trends but also trying to like honor the sort of like constants in this world like how have you how is your background sort of like navigated that sort of dynamic so, so it's interesting so every year or so something new pops up it's just and most schools are slow to jump on board but just paranoid for many different reasons and in my world Ad space. The big thing for us a couple years ago was iOS fourteen. So if you don't work in if you don't work in marketing, you don't know what that is. Long story short, data lack of it. Now we, it's hard to, hard for us to target people. Extremely hard than it used to be. Before, if you know how to target people, you don't have to be a marketer. You can just target them and bam and, and done. But all that's taken away. Facebook got in trouble so many times for so many different things. So a lot of targeting is gone. So now you actually have to be a marketer. You just can't type in some targeting and call it a day. You have to actually market to people. Um, and I found out in my experience with schools, they still think it's the it's the same. So I can just punch in targeting and go after somebody else. And that's, we can't do that anymore. I was told the other day, we have to find someone in the Southwest who's a career changer, who's a, a certain type of job title, who wants to have this job. I was like, that person does not exist. No market on the planet can do what you're asking. It's just, it's not a thing. So, a lot of it's like mind shift. You gotta get with the times. The trends, like if you're on TikTok, unfortunately, you are losing somebody. That's just the reality of it. Um, a lot of people are like the Chat GPT thing was on, which blew up on LinkedIn pretty fast back in the fall. And people are losing their minds. Like, oh, well, what's gonna happen? We lose our jobs. Like, no, you lose your job. Maybe that's because of you, not because of Chat GPT. <laughs> I don't think that one thing can help you lose your job. But I would say. Trends are extremely important. You gotta go with the times. Like if they're you look for a certain student, you gotta go where they are. That means you gotta be a little you gotta be quick to move, not go through ten layers of red tape to get something going. 
Um, like we well, mentioned before, TikTok, it's, it's a big deal. But data is a bigger deal to schools. So what I, what I understand, a lot of schools would like to maybe do it, but they're concerned about the data, hence the hearing we had a couple weeks ago. So the big thing was like, where is the data housed? Is that housed in China or is housed in the United States? And I think the TikTok, that's why they had Project Texas. So data is stayed in the U.S., which I think is not, I think it's supposed to be done sometime this year. I don't know for sure. The schools are like, no, no, no. We got, we got to be 100% sure before we do that. Now, some schools have jumped on that. The majority, they won't. They're just paranoid. And that's kind of those things like, you know, you could wait and lose some traction or you could just jump on. And with the politics of schools, it's, it's hard to jump on, that, jump on that train. But I would recommend if you can, you get on that. Also, uh, I'm not a big fan of organic. I don't do it. But Facebook is making a push to compete with TikTok, obviously. TikTok hurts Facebook quite a bit. So um, Facebook Reels are making a huge comeback. Like Facebook is pushing certain, certain like Facebook turns a dial, do whatever, do whatever it wants. We don't understand. Like they, Facebook does whatever it wants. It can push posts. It can push whatever it wants. Like you know, an organic diet on Facebook because Facebook killed it. They wanted to do it. They control it. So and now they're trying to compete with TikTok and you know YouTube Shorts. So now they have Reels, and Facebook just turned the dial up, and your Reels get way more attention right now. So you gotta pay attention to the signs, and you gotta go with the flow. Because that's what the people are. Unfortunately, we don't own any of these platforms, obviously. But that's what the people are. So you, you got to go with the flow or get left behind. That's just the reality of life these days. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of, uh, I wasn't sure, I guess, necessarily, like, what your answer is what it make, you know, is going to be. But it makes a lot of sense because, like, yeah, we're almost just sort of, you know, uh, I was going to say like almost just like victim to the algorithms or whatever, you know, because like we kind of have to suffer and figure them out and sort of, you know, discern, you know, from the tea leaves of like, oh, okay, this is like, is organic versus paid? Or if you put the link in the comments versus in the post or like, you know, all these sort of things and seeing what works. And I think that's if you sort of like meditate on it and kind of process and, you know, do some reframing, Mm -hmm. it's like, that's part of the fun, I guess, you know, is uh, maybe testing. (laughs) For some people. But but like you said, because actually I was listening to a podcast the other day about like direct to consumer, like uh, clothing brands and all these sort of things. It was that idea of what you're saying where like back in the day, you could like build a business like pretty well just through like paid Facebook ads or whatever. Else. And it's just like mm-hmm. that has sort of uh, been waning, you know, for so long and just, you know, yeah, one, like where are users? Where are the users that you want to uh, market to? And then like what platforms are conducive to maybe the type of content that you can or are willing to do or, you know, I don't know. So yeah, there's a lot of discernment mm-hmm. of like, you know, on one hand, follow the trends, but also it's like, you know, do it in do a way that's like relevant or, or uh, Correct, that yes. sort of thing. So yeah. And when I say follow the trends, I mean, don't blindly follow anybody. Um, so you got to think Facebook has been around for what, going on 20 years or something like that. No social platform has more data than Facebook. None of them do. Facebook still, in my opinion, is the best one to target. Uh, hands down. TikTok's been around for a couple of years. And Facebook ad platform is but Facebook can find the people you're looking for better than most platforms. When I say follow the trends, just follow the trends, you know, but don't, you know, take one take all your money, put it in one bucket. That's just as foolish. You know, you test you test it out. Can XX, XY complement what I'm doing now? Like what where it works together, not just abandon ship and go to the next, which a lot of people do. They just go from trend to trend to trend. Um, that's not what I'm trying to say. Don't do that. It's just, that's foolish. That's how you lose money. That's how you lose your job. Like, test it out. It doesn't make sense. And then if, you, if, if it works, then kind of move, shift around how you need to go. But just don't go blindly follow anything. Like, a lot of people do that. Um, there's always, like, best practices. Like, there's a best practice for anything these days. And a lot of best practices for ads, for ads, for Facebook, LinkedIn, things like that. I say, okay, cool. When it comes to best practices, I look at this. What's the best practice for my particular campaign, my particular account? Because it's not the same as the one, the other account. When people see these these lists online, say, oh, I want to follow these best practices. Like, dude, that's somebody just made that up. Some random person made that up. Are you going to follow it blindly? That is not smart. Look at your campaign. Look at your data. What is telling you? What makes sense for that campaign? I'm telling you, it's gonna be different from one the other one. I have about 20 different campaigns. They don't all act the same, so I can't blindly follow just set rules. It's, it's just not smart. And you can use it as a guide. You have certain benchmarks, but you know you gotta you gotta be smart about it. 
follow what your your campaign your account's telling you, and then that leads you where you need, want to go. So just don't follow the guy over there because he, he found some inspirational posts on LinkedIn, which is a lot of these days. Um, you got to be smarter about that. So. Let's play a game. What keywords does your website rank for? What doesn't it rank for that you think it should? What are a few opportunities you could be winning on if you tweaked some website copy? Okay, how'd you do? Not great? That's okay. Because our friends at DD Agency want to answer all of those questions for you and then some. DD Agency is a higher ed specific marketing technology agency that has conducted countless SEO audits for colleges and universities across the country. In these audits, they detail where you currently rank, what you could be ranking for, exactly how a copy should be tweaked on website pages, and much more. If this sounds like something you could benefit from, give those folks a ping and be sure to mention that Enrollify sent you to claim a 10% discount on any of their SEO offerings. Head on over to enrollify.org slash D-D-A-S-E-O or simply follow the link in the show notes below that will guarantee you a 10% discount off of your audit. Again, Head on over to enrollify.org slash D-D-A-S-E-O to learn more. Now, on to the show. The core of it for me is like giving all of this the time and attention and resources it deserves so that you can sort of like, yeah, do a little A-B testing and like evaluate, you know, the data that you're getting back and the analytics and whatever on the various platforms and make adjustments and all that versus like, and I think that's almost just like, you know, you could even just see like bigger organizations just, you know, jumping on the newest thing and they're not really mm-hmm. like maybe uh discerning much what they're doing that's maybe like the same on all the platforms versus even just like slight adjustments for you know tiktok versus yep. you know uh, facebook or whatever so um so i think i guess like you said like you, you you know you live a little bit more i guess in like the the paid world at the moment um but like what have you seen be effective with like paid social versus organic because i guess in my mind it's the idea of like uh, you know, paid is more of like, and absolutely correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, paid is more of the like commercial on TV or something. Like you're paying for that spot as a brand or whatever. <laughs> then organic is just trying to like, I don't know, kind of like, like Look shoe, le- shoe leather Hang politics. Out. You know, like you're walking around, <laughs> you're trying to just like meet with people to just get like exposure and awareness and whatever. Like so, like Pretty you're trying much. to. So um, yeah, I guess just trying to discern this and what you've seen yeah. be effective. I guess like in this moment of like you know those two different mm-hmm. paths. And I, I mean, the, I mean, both both work well together. But like, like I said, so I'll, I'll start pay social because that's what I know more about. Pay social today is not what it was three years ago. So what was working three years ago does not work today. So I so said, with the data privacy and things like that, you can you can no longer target like you used to. So if I was looking for somebody who like Comic Con that lived in Arizona three years ago, it'd be easier than today. Not so much. So a lot of times, you know, and this is different for each platform. But I talk about Facebook, that's the biggest advantage of them all. Like, no one can compete with Facebook. They have more people, more users, hands down. Um, you got to, you have to actually talk to the people. So a lot of schools, actually, a lot of schools talk at their prospects, learn this, do that, explore more. Versus when it comes to marketing, I believe, I had to look at it like, what's in it for me? The person who I'm trying to attract, what what can I, what's in it for them? Like I, I have to get to click the ad, so I have to appeal to them, not what I want. I can't talk about my brand and things like that. So I, a lot of that with Facebook and LinkedIn is actually marketing to people. That's the big thing you, that's changed from a couple years ago. You just can't target and say whatever you want. It, it doesn't work that well anymore. Um, we're organic. That probably moves faster than paid, I would say. Because again, multiple platforms. And like I said about the Reels thing. Literally flip on a switch and fall. And that switch could turn back off in six months. You are, I tell people, Facebook's a devil we can't live without. You got to play the game. There's nothing you can do about it. It, it sucks. And they only, that's just happened. Well, all of a sudden, you're organic, you're doing well, and bam, it's gone. Uh, it happened on LinkedIn earlier this year. People are doing all this stuff on LinkedIn. If you remember LinkedIn like a year and a half ago, remember all those inspirational uh, posts about how nice people were? And after a while, people figured, okay, this is this is fake because there's so many of them. It was it was the same post over and over by different people. I was just trying to get attention, and they didn't fed into it. A lot of people complained, and I was too. And all of a sudden, it was gone. I don't see it like more like I used to. It used to be all the time. They leave, flip the switch, and all that stuff went away. So, 
you can complain about these platforms, but also you have to rely on them. You gotta, you gotta go with the flow. Like you can, it doesn't matter if you complain or like LinkedIn did this, or Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. They don't care about us. We're, we're not important. Like it's their world. We just living in. I tell people that. Like they literally do not care about us. They have so much money. There's so many different versions of us. I mean, it's not like you spend a million dollars on Facebook. They don't care. They got a thousand other countries that spend ten million dollars on Facebook. We're not important. So trends, the way where it works, you just gotta do what they wanna. It's like you do what they want or you don't play. It's their game. That's the reality of all these platforms. Pick one, their game. It happens with TikTok a lot too. People are like, oh, send TikTok stuff, show myself. They flip the switch. I almost wish they flipped, but <laughs> you better find out and go do what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. There's just what you think of like, yeah, there's like somebody with a bunch of sliders on like a board where they're just like, more of this, less of that, or whatever, you know, yeah. That is, the simple form is. is like paid versus social or paid, yep. paid versus organic social, where like that's a pretty clear delineation that they seem to be oscillating, you know, from time to time. Yep. But then, yeah, is it video? You know, is it. Oh, you know, and of course, video links, short form. Likes the video. Yeah. Or yeah. And, and, and now, listen, this is <laughs> video has changed so much in the past year and a half, mainly because of TikTok. They changed the game. So, was there a YouTube shorts three, four years ago? <laughs> no. Was there a real three, four years ago? No. TikTok came out, and man, they copied them fast. Uh, and then YouTube started, you know, catering to, they wanted to push more reels. So you look at your favorite YouTube person a year ago, before the reels came out, and look at it now, they have nothing but these little YouTube shorts all in the front of their little banner now, because that's what they're pushing. Everybody's playing catch up. And it is what it is. You better catch up too, or you get left behind. So it's whenever something fancy new comes out, everyone plays catch up. Chat GPT's gonna look at answer. I mean I mean, everybody's jumping on AI now. Which I understand, but everybody's incorporated it now versus a year ago. Nothing. Mm-hmm. No AI, nothing a year ago. And I was in a conference, so, you know, people, AI has been around for like forever. A lot of times you don't even know if you're, you're, you're doing this. So when you're typing on your uh, your phone or Google and it helps you finish the word, that's that's AI. It's just not like chat GPT AI in your face. So it's going to change a lot, but not really. It just makes you more efficient if you know how to use it. If you're scared of it, there's a quote saying, chat GPT AI won't take your job, obviously. But someone else who's using it in the same role for you, same similar role, role as you will take your job if they use chat if they use AI better than you. I think that's true. Mm-hmm. You got you gotta learn because this stuff changes all the time. Depending, I guess, how to sort of integrate it with different platforms you're using, like doing some sort of data analysis or whatever, like, and maybe it's providing inspiration for like, you know, copy for a, a blog or a, a social post or something. But it's like, like you said, it's like, it's not going to replace you, but it is this thing that can sort of augment someone to be able to be more efficient, more effective, or, mm-hmm. you know, those sort of things. So yeah, like it's, I don't think that's where I, I kind of wanted to go next of just sort of like looking towards the future. So I think that that is one big component. Um, and I'm sure they'll just continue to be sort of uh, ripple still of sort of the, the TikTok, uh, you know, sort mm-hmm. of, uh, disruption and everything. So just anything else that you're sort of eyeing, um, you know, in the near future, just like, cause obviously it's, it's, it's impossible to predict precisely. Um, so I think that's, it's good where you're sort of like moderating, you know, if you're reading like top tips for whatever platform, it's like, they're talking about like, whatever they wrote it or before or whatever else. So like, I don't know if you just have sort of a, uh, an impression of just sort of like, you know, I guess at this point, the next couple of months, maybe just for folks, if they can kind of have some pointers. Every time I see someone says my top 10 predictions, my this, so I have some type of agenda behind it, like whether it pushes something. So I'm not, I don't like to play a game. I, I'll, I give you what I, I'll say what I believe. I think higher ed marketing should go. Uh, I don't like predict anything. I can't tell the future. If I did, man, I'd be a millionaire if I could do that. <laughs> I'd be a dream. So I, I think a couple of different things. So platforms have change. We need to change with it. So a lot of higher ed marketing is, it goes up to a department chair, whoever's, not that school, department chair of that, of that department. And a lot of them just need to let go. And when I say, and I've said it, I've been saying this for years, a lot of, a lot of the stuff that comes out from these department chairs, these department, you know, ads, uh, they cater to the person in charge and not the person they're looking for. So the ads are very, 
dry, um, not really focused on the other person. And I, I've, said, I've told the story before, I worked at a school a while ago and we're looking for certain people. And it was in person and then uh, I put the Facebook ad out and the CEO came up to me, a totally smart woman, way smarter than me, a couple of masters degrees, not even close. She says, hey Jay, come here. And she put up a phone, she was like, I don't like this, take this down. I was like, why? So, so I, I, I just don't like it. And I was like, oh, are you, and I said, oh, are you, are you applying for the program? She said, no, I just looked at her. So you're not applying for the program. I just stared at her for a minute till she got what I was trying to say. It's not for you. You don't need to like it. Like that's the problem. A lot of they, they want, I have to prove it. I have to like it. No, it's not. I'm not trying to find you. I'm trying to find people who want to be in your program. That's a completely different. That's a completely different message. That's that's a huge one. Like just let go. You got to understand. It's not about you. Um, obviously, video you gotta go reels. I think that's important. It is what it is. We talked about that. Move on. Um, and I would say the biggest thing in all of this is empathy. Um, you really gotta put yourself in their shoes. So when I say a lot of this marketing, like the target will go away, you have to talk like what's, why are people wanting to go to, to school? Like why, okay, for example, you have that microphone, why'd you buy it? The one you have now, why'd you buy that particular microphone? It was like a cheap, effective option for what I needed. <laughs> so you, but you bought it because you had a problem you're trying to solve something. That's right. basically like, yeah. So same applies to a higher ed. Do I have a problem in my life that I'm trying to fix? So why would you, if that's the case, you have these, you have this prospect, you want to try to attract them, talk about their issues versus learn how to explore, how we can do blah, 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 blah. No, like empathy is key. Like if you can do that, that's, that's real marketing, not to targeting, where you talk, understand your prospect, understand who they are. I hate to say prospect, I'd say people, because they're not your prospect, so they put you in your system. They're just the people. People have issues in life, all that stuff. There's a reason why people go to college, there's a reason why they don't. But if you could address or at least highlight why they should at least click on your, your ad, then your business. And I guarantee you, your ads will be better. Your game will be better. You get them actually on the call with a robot advisor, then my job is done. From there, obviously, it's not, not to me. I don't, I don't Some people think ads help pe convince people to sign up for a $100,000 program. No, we do not. That's not what we do. <laughs> we find interested people, interested quality people that they talk to. But empathy is, man, that's huge. Especially when it comes to messaging. You gotta say the right thing to the right person at the right time in their life. That's different levels of messaging. That's a different funnel. That's a whole nother ball game. Those are my things I think we really need to focus on higher education. That prediction is just what my belief is I think will help move the needle further down the line, so. Yeah. Yeah, and, I guess, and that's fair, absolutely. I'm like, you know, because it's like, okay, I don't want to be like, you know, held to like specific predictions, but I think just like uh, advice for the future, uh, given sort of the, mm -hmm. the context and what things will either uh, change or kind of stay the same. But in my mind, yeah, you just want to like figure out the right sort of, you know, management of your investment, all that work could be like, you know, people think of, mm -hmm. oh, well, I got to get on, you know, short form video. Like, it's like, well, are you capturing any video currently? And you could just like make little sound bites and that sort of thing. Cause it's like different where some people I think of, you know, Oh, it's just some person like holding their phone, you know, doing whatever. And it's like, that can be part mm -hmm. of it. If you're mm -hmm. leveraging that sort yeah. of like influencer marketing or something, but mm -hmm. you know, you can kind of just, you know, a portion of it, I think like repackage things that you're doing to provide really like concise, yeah. you know, succinct packages and all that kind of stuff. So if it's like, you know, that idea of like, you gotta do it. So like, this is a way that you can maybe start getting some momentum and be like, oh, wow. Yeah. Like we're seeing some like positive response to this. Um, Shocker. But, Shocker. Uh, Shocker. And, I, and I like to just like what you're saying where like that idea of like, you know, why did I buy this microphone? And, and I love this microphone, but it's almost like uh, one part of it is like, it's not just such a clear, explicit formula necessarily like if somebody was trying to sell me that like i kind of stumbled upon it well reviewed good price and all that like i didn't want to have to think about it that much and that's the whole idea of like almost why i like it it's reliable it's effective and all those sort of things but like i didn't maybe even necessarily know what i wanted until i like found it and then i could kind of like articulate it better and like that you were sort of it's like it's at least like one layer beneath the surface of just sort of acknowledging and empathizing like who are you person that i'm at least trying to 
when again, like level set what the goal is at least like request more information, be curious enough to kind of start the conversation versus it like, because obviously it would be a different language if you're like, sign up now immediately to do that, like register for classes at this moment. Like if you're like trying to get urgency or whatever. A lot of ads do that. And I'm telling you, they're, they're expensive. Mm-hmm. And if, listen, I'm selling a $100,000 program. Let's just take the money out for a minute. It's three years of your life. You got to commit. You got to commit. You got a family, your wife has to commit. You got children, they got to commit. The sacrifices you make has to greatly outweigh that, this, this thing. Like, is it worth this? Getting this degree help my life get here. That's what it comes down to. Like, it's, can it help my life? What's in it for me? That's what people understand. Like, I'm not going to say, and say, oh, I want that degree right away. No, there's a solid problem I have. It's going to make my life better. What in that ad can get me thinking, huh? Maybe I should think about it. Like stuff like that. Because a lot of a lot of ads go apply now. Dude, I'm not applying for nothing. I'm not applying for anything. Apply now. Like cold targeting. Literally, grow your alumni pool of 13,000 people. Apply now. That's a real ad. And you expect people to just jump on board. Or sometimes like, oh, Facebook ads, like that's not doing anything. Like, no, we find interested people. Like they may be interested, but like life situations, they can't do it. Well, I found out this program is so much money, they can't do it. Not that they're not qualified, it's just money is an issue. And for them to sacrifice that much money, it has to, it has to, you know, what is the return on investment on my life? And a lot of higher ed marketing places don't quite understand that. And that's why they're always scrambling for the, the next enrollment. It's always enrollment, the next one, next one, next one. My philosophy, let's build a enrollment for future enrollments. That's a different. That's a different strategy. Different, different philosophy. Like, obviously, you have to worry about the next one. But it's like the things you can do on the front end to get people prepared two, three years, one year down the line that a lot of schools don't understand because they're just they want it now, 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 now. That's not how it works. The the when people decide to go to school to when they sign up, there's no average time. It could be a month. It could be six months. It could be two years. It could be two weeks. So you got to do stuff in that time to follow people on the the time they're on that journey. Everybody's ready to apply now. Very few people are. Like, so you got to understand that and give it the flow. Yeah. Yeah. I guess my mind is thinking where it's like, if you get like the wrong sort of messages where it's like, oh no, like you're being successful in spite of those messages or something where it's like, they were going to sign up anyway. It wasn't as if that ad was like, oh my gosh, like I'm just Correct. like immediately convinced or whatever. It's just like, yep. like you said, it's like they were already X amount of time on uh-huh. that sort of decision right in their brains. Journey. Yep. Yeah, so you know, and it just happened to be like, oh yeah, that's right. Let me, uh, you know, do whatever. Yeah, um, it, it, there's so, a saying, you know, yeah. it's uh, it's called. I'm I'm a, I've, I got this from another agency a long time ago. It's called a. Uh, I'm a Facebook marketer, I'm not a magician. I can't magic make people do something. I can influence them a little bit, but I can't yeah. make them sign up. <laughs> no, I can't do that. So. Yeah, especially yeah, like you said, like higher ed is distinct in that way. I think like the marketing of it mm-hmm. just it's going to be a little bit of a more uh more slow uh process understandably so um so uh, as we wrap up we would like to have our kind of two final questions if there's any um resources certainly um your own or other like books or articles or things or whatever else other podcasts that you'd want to just give a shout out to uh, for folks to check out kind of like before when i think of top 10 of resources and podcasts and books they all have a little bias towards them so if you're looking and nothing wrong with, nothing wrong with that but if you're looking to learn about paid social or organic social, I suggest you go straight to the source. So Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, they all have these product release updates that you sign up for. That's where you get your information from. Because it's pure, unfiltered, that's the day. And if you pay attention, they would tell you what they're going to do six months down the line. They drop little nuggets like, we're preparing for this. There's this late Google, Facebook product releases, whatever that may be, LinkedIn. And you sign up for a newsletter and that's your information. That's me better than anything you find on scrolling through social media because that's from the source. That's going to help you out quite a bit. Final question is always if you have a final thought or a call to action on oh. this topic. I think you've already provided a lot of stuff, uh, a lot mm-hmm. of fodder for folks to, to think through. So just anything that you'd like to share to wrap up the episode? You know, I just share. Well, I am looking for, I'm doing a, a survey for on higher end marketers. So the idea is to get Fifteen hundred people to share their experiences of how they're marketing to their prospects again, human beings. So, whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, 
email. I'm trying to put, put together a, a survey that sh- find common things. Um, cause I don't know, it seems to be all over the place. So I'm trying to look for common things, what we're all doing together, maybe work collectively and try to get something going that way. Um, that's the big thing I'm looking for. Obviously my website is tomorrow 83com You can fill out there and then we can talk about if you have help with your school or if you need help with your school or you want to fill out the survey. It, it's, it's more about information trying to see where we're all at and we can help each other. That's, I'm trying to help each other out. Like it's one mind's cool, but 30 minds work on the same topic. It's, more powerful um and just pay attention trends are good but don't abandon everything y'all if someone's working if it ain't broke don't fix it please don't fix it if it's not broke so mm. that's that that good it. final thought and i uh, appreciate you kind of making yourself available obviously to uh, collaborate with folks. I always think that there's like sort of like always room at the table, sort of rising tide lifts all ships. If we're all sort of, you know, doing some show and tell, helping each other out, providing advice and support, uh, especially in education. I feel like it's a great space for that. Mm-hmm. So I think, yeah, uh, education marketers and uh, folks in social media, I think that'd be great uh, for folks to connect with you and uh, keep that conversation going. Absolutely. So appreciate you, Jay, for uh, reaching out to be on the show and sharing all that you did. And I just really appreciate your time. Appreciate you. Hey, all Zach here from Enrollify. If you like this podcast, chances are you'll like other Enrollify shows too. Our podcast network is growing by the month, and we've got a plethora of marketing, admissions, and higher ed technology shows that are jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks that are all designed to empower you to become a better higher ed professional. Our shows feature a selection of the industry's best as your hosts. Learn from Mickey Baines, Jeremy Tears, Jamie Hunt, Corinne Myers, Jamie Gleason, and many, many more. You can learn more about the Enrollify Podcast Network at podcasts.enrollify.org. Our shows help higher ed marketers and admissions professionals find their next big idea. Find yours at podcasts.enrollify.org.